everybody and thanks for joining me today so we will start again showing you where i am in the pattern i uh almost completely done the fountain there and uh we're into the uh hedges on the uh right hand side and i got a, a bit of the orange flower at the bottom the very first one so yeah, we're moving right along, over 83% done. So yeah, pretty excited about that. Let's see. So I've got some big blocks of color here, as you can see. Hopefully you'll find this uh, somewhat entertaining. <laughs> I hope my uh, washing machine in the background isn't too loud there. <laughs> my uh, laundry room doesn't have a door, so I'm stitching upstairs and that laundry room's downstairs. But uh, I guess it depends what I'm washing. Sometimes that sound really carries. I got a load of towels going in there today, so I guess they're louder. Yeah, I actually read you are not supposed to wash towels with the rest of your laundry because it wears them out faster, which I totally did not know. <laughs> Although I'll admit, I don't always do towels separately. So, yeah, or, I mean, I guess that makes sense because um, they said you can wash like a shower curtain or a plastic tablecloth in the washing machine and they tell you to throw some uh, towels in there to help scrub it clean which it does do so I mean I guess it makes sense that they might be rougher on the rest of your clothes and wear them out a bit faster so yeah I'm not really someone who spends a lot on clothes mostly I just want them to be comfortable <laughs> I mean I said even pre-pandemic I only dressed up maybe two three times a year Oh dear. Yeah, so 187,000 stitches. Oops. I'm thinking I'm going to hit 195 by the end of the month. 190, 195, we shall see. Oh dear. Just trying to pull a piece of thread free and it did this. I hate when that happens. Snarled up pretty bad. Usually they pull out cleanly, but sometimes they can be, my gosh, I think I may have made it worse doing that. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty uh, unsalvageable. Oh. I guess, good thing it was mostly at one end <laughs> of the floss. So, I didn't lose a lot. There. Okay. Let's try that again. Yeah, that can happen sometimes if you don't smooth out the length of the floss as you're pulling out one piece. It can tend to uh, to tangle up a bit more like that. Okay. Yeah, so as I said, we're cooler weather, but I have to say, um, looking at our two-week forecast for this time of year for us, it's actually um, looking uh, pretty nice. Because sometimes we have snow this early and we're not cold enough to have any morning frost yet or anything. So for us, this is uh, practically balmy weather. <laughs> okay. Did I? Oh, I see. I did do this one. I forgot to color it in though. 
think. Yes. Okay. That is what I did. Okay, so I'm going to switch to this color instead. And carry this strand upwards. Yeah, I was surprised. I saw the first shipment of um, pumpkins at the store already. And uh, for us, storing it outside isn't always a good idea because if we go above and below freezing, then um, they freeze and thaw and then they turn into just mush. We had one year because it was, um, it was below freezing early October. So there were no pumpkins anywhere because they would freeze and then thaw once or twice. And then the stores would have to throw them all out because they were just, yeah, they were mush. I think that year I ended up having to go and buy a plastic one with the LED light in it because there were no, yeah, there were no pumpkins anywhere to carve. So, Ooh. but yeah, so since we had the pandemic, I don't hand out candy anymore. I just put the, um, you know, a big bowl of it on my front stoop and people are on the honor system to take it take what you know one piece each or whatever and um yeah i said you know what i'm probably going to just do that forever because um running back and forth to the door is a pain so if some people that means they cheat and take an extra piece whatever <laughs> oh this one i parked oh no what did i do oh think mm. this one I may have done it wrong yeah so where did I put it I can't even tell where this came from <laughs> let's go back to the back but I can tell that yeah I parked it incorrectly I should have done I don't even know if I did this somewhere else I can't tell, but you know what? The colors are so similar, you won't be able to really tell. So this will be just fine. Just double check with my counting here. It's three from that blue line. Four from that one. Okay. And I'll park this again. So it's this one here. I did something wrong. It's the correct color, as far as I can tell. Just grab more of the... Yeah, okay. So I don't know what I did. <laughs> but I probably put this in place of one of the other dark blues, and they're so similar that I can't even tell where I went wrong. So you know what? I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Personalization. Oh, that happens sometimes. But... When I can't tell what I did and the colors are this close together, I think we're good. I mean, this is mostly the shadow part anyway, so it's not like it's the main focal point of the piece. So, yeah. I make mistakes sometimes. More than I'd like to sometimes. <laughs> Care to admit? Oops. Just trying to drag my thumb across the across it there, but it thought I was um, attempting to highlight multiple stitches with a long press. Actually, hang on a minute. Let's do. Let's cross these two bottom ones first, and the top one because I'm wanting my thread to end up at the top. see there's a lot of this color in this area <coughs> pardon me <coughs> and the nice thing is the stitching goes relatively fast then as I'm not having to uh, change threads very much at all 
Oh, I unthreaded that, didn't I? Yeah, there is my empty needle. Decide which direction I want to carry this. I'm gonna end up with uh, multiple threads here. I can tell that already. So, just trying to plan ahead of which is going where. So this is the closest. I'm gonna park it right there. Yeah, that is what I'll do. kind of stitched all this big area of the one color. This is not wanting to cooperate with me today, I tell you. Uh, to get it out of the way because I figured that would be kind of boring to show you guys on camera. <laughs> yeah. This pattern is so detailed that when I end up with a huge uh, block of one color, it feels weird. <laughs> yeah, so it's kind of a gloomier gray day today. But I'm still able to go for my walk. I'm going to go as long as I can while it's still warm enough. And there isn't uh, snow and ice to slip on because yeah the worst is um a lot of times in the winter here the um you know we have it goes above and below freezing a fair amount and so it ends up um melting and thaw uh, or thawing and freezing and you end up with layers and layers of ice <coughs> and then it will um sometimes snow on top of it so you have no idea. It looks like there's just a thin layer of snow on the sidewalk and you step on it and just, yeah, your feet go flying. Yeah, my husband said, uh, it was the slang term. They said they, they, he had what they called a yard sale because, um, he went flying and his toolbox went one way, you know, and, uh, his stuff went all out of it. So it's scattered all over the yard. Like it's a yard sale, which I thought was quite funny. <laughs> At least he didn't hurt himself, so, yeah. Yeah, he had one time that he, it was sort of, he slid on the ice and it seemed okay. And then as he was coming home, he was kind of hopping up the stairs. And on one of the hops, his back locked up. Yeah. So I could um, hear, you know, this thunk, 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 thunk coming up the stairs. And all of a sudden it stops and it's like, well, what's going on? Why isn't he coming in? I open the door and he's standing there going, help, my back locked up. <laughs> oh. I remember our son was little. <clears throat> and then at one point he fell on the floor and he couldn't get back up again. And our son was little. He's freaking out that dad's hurt, you know? And so he's like, kind of like trying to caterpillar away. <laughs> so it didn't upset him. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah, that is the worst. It's rarely my back that's the problem. For me, it's my neck. <clears throat> okay. to add a new thread. I'll try not to tangle it up this time. That's better. <laughs> Try not 
have to stitch another thread into my working thread. I've done that before. It was not fun. Yeah, I got a fair amount done since my last uh, session, I think, because uh, I was still well into the fountain there near the swans. We're now a ways away. We're about five or six diagonals away from that now. So, oh, all oh, right, I went the wrong way. My one rule, always, always park in the same corner or I will get myself confused. There. Yeah. Okay. Oh, hard to read. Oh, yeah, these early mornings uh, for kiddos, uh, driver's ed course can't end soon enough for me, that's for sure. really a person who can nap generally either often will mean if I do then I can't sleep at night and uh, you know usually I needed the nap because I was already tired because I didn't get enough sleep the night before and then it's kind of a vicious cycle that then I can't sleep the next night and I need a nap even more which means I can't sleep the night after so yeah <laughs> I generally just try to power through To at least keep my uh, my nighttime sleep intact as much as possible. I mean, I often can't nap, but then when I do, I'm like so groggy, and I I hate that feeling. So, okay, so let me carry this one back up. Not that there's a lot to carry. This one is getting closer to the end, so. Yeah, I generally only nap when I'm sick. Cause yeah, I had even, we were um, visiting family and like I said before, it's a very, very long drive, 15 hours. We do it all in one day. And uh, so of course I was totally wiped out. And I think the second or third day there, I was just like, okay, I'm gonna lie down and nap cause I'm exhausted and I have a huge sleep debt, so. It shouldn't throw things off that much, right? Yeah, no, it, it did. <laughs> I still had trouble sleeping that night, even though I still had a massive sleep debt. It's like, ah, come on. Yeah, my husband, he can nap like any time. He's got 20 minutes, he can lie down and fall asleep. I'm like, come on, that's not fair. <laughs> uh, but then it, I don't know if he was always like that because I think it might be um, military training because he was in the military. And uh, yeah, you have to learn to take whatever bit of rest that you can when you can get it, right? So, yeah. So, I don't know if he was always like that and it made it better or he learned it because of the military because I didn't know him before. Yeah, it's kind of funny because I always said to myself, I'd never date a soldier. So we'd been dating for like a week or two. And oh, I said, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm in the army. And I was like, oh, shoot, you know? <laughs> oh, never say never, right? It was too late then. Oh. Oh. I guess maybe it's a good thing I didn't know ahead of time because, you know, things worked out, so. Oh, no, I almost put that in the wrong spot. Yeah. Then I realized the parked threads around where I was working did not match, so something was not right.
These colors are kind of going more the same, same slant as the diagonal, so that makes the stitching a bit easier when it kind of hugs that edge. Because uh, recently when I was doing the fountain, they were going opposite because of the way the uh, the design was and that, that kind of slowed things down a little bit. There we are. I think this thread will be just long enough yeah, to do to finish crossing these stitches and I'll be adding another one now there's a lot in this area so I've been blowing through uh, through skins of this thread very quickly It's like another five diagonals I'll be into the pillars, which are at the far right edge. And then we'll be uh, ready for one more pass across this pattern. The end is in sight. Yeah, I like the process, but I mean, having it finished is definitely, definitely nice. Thinking if I finish this by Christmas, then that'll be my Christmas gift to myself: is getting the uh, the finishing materials to uh, to finish and mount this. That's probably what I'll do. I'll have to renew my uh, my Fabricland uh, membership. It's good for a year, and then you get like. I think it's like a minimum of 20% off a lot of things and uh, most fabrics is 40 to 50% off so yeah sometimes I find the uh, the 25 bucks for the membership is kind of how much I would save for the fabric anyway but then that means for the rest of the year I still get money off so if I end up needing stuff later it's kind of worth it so to get the membership just in case if not, well, I broke even, so. But yeah, because I had once I didn't renew the membership, and then later I ended up having to go back for more materials. I was like, oh, shoot. If I got the membership, now I'd be, uh, I'd be ahead. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, I don't sew enough. That was one that never really caught on for me because I'm just... Uh, like I um I knit and I find the shaping for me is easier than with the with the sewing. Well, there's sort of mathematical formulas in the knitting that I find easier, even though I'm not a math person. Yeah, it isn't measuring and pinching and folding and trying to get it right because I think I'm not good at that free form kind of stuff. Like I can sew basic, you know, things. Like I made my grind guards or I, um, I hem pants cause I'm short. So that happens quite a bit. Uh, 
I made a, I made a weighted blanket for my kiddo and one for myself because they had, those are expensive. They're like 300 bucks or something. And to buy the materials, especially when I had my uh, membership, was like $60. And it took me one afternoon, so I thought, yeah. Unfortunately, can't use it as much because of the loose joint problem. But it, it is helpful for sometimes anyway. You're feeling really restless. My son called it his hug blanket. <laughs> he said it felt like a big hug. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I guess it's like a deep instinct we have, like swaddling babies. The pressure is, is calming. Although when he was, my son was a baby, he wasn't a big on being swaddled. He wanted his hands out. You could wrap the rest of him up nice and tight, but uh, yeah, he wanted his hands free. He actually, when he was a bit bigger, he had a sleep sacks until he was about two, which is really nice. No loose blankets and nice and warm. You can't kick them off. Yeah. Now he's taller than me. Yeah, it's kind of wild too, cause um, he used to go to a moms and tots group when he was little. And so now some of the kids who were, you know, two or three years older than him, their parents are taking them to college this last, uh, this last uh, fall. I was like, what? No. <laughs> you know, I remember you when you were still in training pants you know <laughs> or diapers even oh my gosh how are you going to college and university my goodness It's funny. <laughs> the needle fell, flew out of my hand and it stuck to the magnet from the other side. <laughs> oh dear. Just reaching around trying to find it hanging down there. Okay. So let's take a look. Okay, so I've got shorter bits, I think. Yes, I do. Okay, I'm going to use a longer piece. Up. Before that 320 row line. So I did the, I redid my math and discovered that by the time I get to the, uh, the uh, right side edge, that'll be about 89% complete. So we'll have 11% for the very last pass across as um, it's a f uh, 50 rows rather than 60 as I've been doing in other passes across this.
it's uh four hundred and ten stitches uh uh high so yeah, that's how it worked out divide by six and then there was fifty for the last one. All right, a bunch of threads here, but pretty soon I'll be parking a bunch of them out of the diagonal and then I can tuck them away. One more up at the top. Actually, this will work just right for the last two. Double checking with my grid line. It's a good thing I did, because I would have grabbed the wrong one there. Oops, unthreaded. So it turns out I'm running out of stuff to watch on Prime, but uh, husband and son or not, they've been watching um, Top Gear, yeah, which is a very long-running UK show about cars. So, yeah, I think they've got like over 200 episodes total. So, uh, yeah, we're gonna keep it for another year, I guess. <laughs> well, actually, I have. Um, tell us reward points and one of them is um I can get a free year's worth of Amazon Prime subscription so really it'll be free so might as well when I run out of stuff well I have a, a bunch of stuff on Tubi that I want to watch that's a free one you just need to um watch ads so I guess I'll watch that and I have some DVDs too that I haven't had a chance to get around to. I got um, uh, The Golden Age, HBO, their first season on DVD, so I have to watch that, see how it how it is. Their stuff's usually pretty good. We really liked uh, Boardwalk Empire. That was one that um, just got recommended to me. Again, I'd never heard of it when it was on. And... Uh, that's about the uh, Prohibition era and uh, mobsters and all that stuff. So, based on some real characters. So, yeah, and it was one of those, the whole DVD set came on sale for like 60 bucks for, you know, the whole five seasons. And it's like, hey, for that price, I'm willing to give it a shot. I liked it. I, I loaned it to a relative and they liked it too. And then I ended up showing it to my husband. I love historical dramas. He doesn't always, but some of them he will watch with me. So yeah, after I finished it, I said, you know, I think you'd probably like this. So 
Because, yeah, they have some real-life characters. There's uh, Al Capone in it. And there's some based on real characters. I think uh, the real guy was Enoch Johnson, and they named him Enoch Thompson, or one or the other, one way or the other. One was so that they could take some liberties with it, but was based on a real person who uh, was one of the uh, the top guys in Atlantic City. So... Obviously, don't watch if you're really sensitive to uh, violence, because uh, it's very, 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 very violent. <laughs> well, HBO, right? They're not exactly known for um, uh, doing things subtly, right? <laughs> yeah, and then... There's um, PBS's Sanditon. I bought the second season. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Uh, definitely not quite what I was expecting when it said, you know, based on the unfinished novel by Jane Austen. It's definitely racier than, than uh, what you expect for Jane Austen. So, and I'll have to say that first season did not end the way I expected it to. And they didn't even know if they were going to have a second season. It was like, what? You can't leave it on a cliffhanger like that. But, uh, yeah. There's a second I, I read there's going to be a third. So, yeah, quite enjoying that. I'm thinking I said a prime, I'm running out of stuff, but then maybe I'll get one of those um, like BritBox subscriptions because uh, then you get all the UK crime shows, which are there a, ba a bajillion of them. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I watched all of the first 20 seasons of Midsommar Murders was included in Prime, but then um, season 21 wasn't. So maybe I'll cave get the Britbox subscription and then there was um like there's all the Inspector Morse and I think Father Brown and all sorts of that there's Endeavor which I was watching on Vision TV but they've only been showing the first like three or four seasons in repeats and nothing more and there's like six of them so yeah maybe I'll do that and maybe I'll get a PBS one after that one I finish what I want on BritBox because, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff there I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing. I often end up buying PBS on DVD because I know I'm going to watch it more than once. But, uh... Yeah. I see when I have something I want to watch I know I'm going to watch more than once I like to actually physically own a copy which unfortunately with a lot of stuff these days you can't do because they want to make you uh subscribe to the uh, streaming service forever so they don't make it available on DVD like uh we really enjoyed um Carnival Row which was um starring Orlando Bloom and it was set during like the industrial age of London, but with um, includes uh, fairies and such, you know, fae creatures, which, uh, yeah, we, we really liked. And they're supposed, they, they were supposed to have a second season, but then, you know, COVID hit. So it's still saying there will be a second season. We'll see if they ever pick that up or not. Some shows they did and some they didn't, because that was the same thing with the PBS uh, Sanditon. They said they were going to make a second season, then it got delayed quite a bit because of the pandemic. Then they did end up making it, so I'm hopeful that they're going to do that with them. Um, with Carnival Row. But yeah, that's one we would love to own, but they're not putting it on DVD. Anything that you can buy online is a is a pirated copy, so, because, yeah. Well, like I said, you buy a copy and you can watch it as many times as you want to. They don't get to make more money off it, right? If they make you have to stream, then they can make money off it forever. Same with music. 
they're always trying to get me to stream and I'm like, no, I want to own the song. Especially since I'm someone who doesn't listen to as many songs, but the ones I like, I listen to over and over. So it's like, why would I keep paying to hear the same song when I can pay, you know, two bucks and it's mine and I can listen to it for the rest of my life as many times as I want and it's mine. You can't take it from me. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm old school. Or, I mean, if uh, your connection goes out, if it's on a DVD or whatever, then uh, you can keep watching. I'm starting to sound curmudgeonly right back in my day <laughs> although it's funny because when I grew up you know the idea of owning a tv show was just like what really <laughs> I remember when that that wasn't such a thing the only way you could own it per se is if you uh you know recorded it on VHS off your cable okay I am definitely going to need multiple threads of this color here is a lot of a lot of it it kind of diverges there so yeah a whole bunch at once that'll speed things up because yeah this session has taken a bit longer there's been a bit of confetti I may carry this back and forth. We'll see. Yeah, sometimes I do that. Although eventually I'm going to end up with two anyway. Yeah, I guess I can do that actually. Plug this back up here. And then give these all those. This piece is long enough. Yeah, so we've got a birthday coming up. We um, we buy our own birthdays and Christmas gifts now because uh, it's just too stressful. <laughs> and we just, we know what exactly what we like. So, yeah, I'm thinking what I want to get for mine. I might get myself some Star Trek merch. <laughs> yeah, maybe some, some t-shirts or some sweaters or something. For a Star Trek fan, I don't have a lot of, a lot of uh, Star Trek swag. I got um, a laptop bag that looks like one of the um, medical carry bags. But then I don't really carry a bag much anymore. Uh, it was messing up my neck to carry a purse. I can only carry it on one side. And yeah, the weight was just giving me neck and shoulder pain. So I, I stopped carrying one. Plus, I mean... Almost everything you need is on your phone these days, right? So, because I used to, like, carry, you know, a book in there and stuff. And, uh, well, now I have a Kindle app on my phone, so I don't need to. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I rarely carry a purse. 
So I don't really use that much anymore. And then I have my uh, my bumper sticker <laughs> that says a USS Element on it, since I drive a Honda Element, so. But yeah, I don't really have a lot of merchandise, so. Yeah, and then there was um there was a uh, online shop Think Geek, but they went under in 2020, I guess due to the pandemic. So, yeah, they had a lot of cool stuff. I saw um they had um you can get this other places now. They were the exclusive for a while, but you can get a a Bluetooth communicator that looks like the original series Star Trek communicator, which I thought was pretty cool. So like the flip the flip phone style. yeah that looks fun but I wouldn't because I wouldn't use it so you know that's another thing to carry yeah it's funny because somebody said you know Starfleet uniforms they lack pockets and somebody said well you know you don't really need them you don't have to carry it I wallet or ID anymore or money you know they got fingerprint scanners or whatever it says your communicators built in you know to your your badge if you absolutely must carry stuff, they have little shoulder bags for that. And somebody said, okay, but what if I find a cool rock and want to bring it home with me? And it says, yeah, anytime somebody's brought some, you know, cool rock back, it ended up to almost destroying the universe and the enterprise and everything. So, you know, the joke was that uh, pockets are a privilege you earn, not a right. <laughs> but, oh, man, it was funny. There was on um, Battlestar Galactica, there was, a. Uh, I remember watching and... There was one scene, kind of an iconic scene, and the, the commander guy, Adama, has his hands in his pockets. I'm thinking, hmm. And I found out later when I was reading about behind the scenes stuff that most of their costumes had the fake pockets, right? It looks like they have a pocket, but it's not actually, like they have on dress pants. And he actually got to have real pockets in his, uh, in his jacket. So that's why he made a big deal of putting his hands in them in the, uh, the scene. Like, hey, everybody, check it out. I got pockets. <laughs> that made me laugh. Ooh. Yeah, we really enjoyed that show. Not, it wasn't the original, it was the um, late 90s, early 2000s remake. But that's one I haven't been able to bring myself to watch again. And it's, I don't know. Like I said, it was years ago I finished it, but I still have the, oh man, we finished the show and there's no more hangover feeling. Even though like, I think we finished it in like 2016. So we really should watch it again. But yeah, we just haven't. And again, that was another one I never really saw when it was on. And uh, thank you, Amazon Algorithm recommended it to me. And again, it was on sale. The Blu-ray set was really cheap for the entire series. And I went, well, why not? And yeah, it was so good. And I found they did the, I won't, give any spoilers even though I know it's an older show but anyway in case anyone wants to watch it but I'll have to say they did the foreshadowing masterfully because there were a few plot twists that I didn't figure out until about maybe 10 seconds before they revealed it on the show and it was one of those when you look back and once you figured out you go oh of course they they laid the seeds for it and they did the foreshadowing so masterfully that it was like of course that's what it you know what happened and yet you didn't see it and when you finally figured out, I was like wait a minute oh those are the best you know when they do it so subtly that it's a huge shock when it's revealed and yet once it's revealed you go oh I should have figured that out sooner you know it's so obvious now those are the hardest to write and they are the most the most satisfying to uh to experience Okay, yeah, I'm gonna finish off this thread. Yeah, I'm gonna definitely end up with more than one, but there's a lot here. 
in this area, so. Yeah, this was a color I had to buy boxes of. It's, it's gonna be used a lot in this design and lots of others that I have going. I have one design of uh, wolves, so that uses a lot of dark grays and such. Ooh. Oh, my goodness, pardon me. Okay. I like the bright uh, pops of color on this uh, on this pattern with the flowers. You know, there's all this darker colors here, and then all of a sudden there's orange and white blossoms. And then on the left hand side of the pattern, there's all those lovely purple flowers. Yeah, it really draws your eye. And definitely keeps the uh, the stitching interesting too. trying to bring that up without piercing the uh, thread there. Oop, that feels like there's a knot there or a lump. Oh, there is two piece of junk. I don't know how it can tie itself into a knot like that. It's so weird. Okay, that's all right. What I often sometimes do is I want to keep using this thread. I'm going to tack it down with a pin stitch over here and then go back to stitching with it. Now that tiny little knot isn't going to end up on the right side. So I'll kind of fudge it. I didn't want to stop and restart it. So I kind of almost did it with that tack there. And then, yeah. But it probably wouldn't be noticeable, but I still don't want the knot to be showing on the front. Even if it was a tiny little one. Yeah, 
They don't look like a lot of colors here, but there was some. Some confetti here. Okay, now there's gonna be some white flowers in this area, so I have to be careful where exactly I'm pin stitching this darker color here because I do not want it to show through. I can tell from looking at the pattern which um, symbols are for very light colored stitches. So that way I'm double checking that I'm pin stitching in the darker areas and then I don't have to worry about it showing. Okay. Mm. All right, I'll call it, be calling it quits pretty soon here. Take a break. Gotta get up and stretch. Oh, it looks like the sun's coming out, so that's nice. Oops. Oh, let's not end this with another snarl like I did earlier. There we go. I was pulling out a thread and it was kind of trying to tie a knot in itself like it did earlier, but this time I was able to uh, smooth it out and save it. I didn't have to cut it out, which is always nice. Oh, I got caught on the bolt there of my... um of my uh, clamp stand. <laughs> oh, the loop there. Doing a loop start, the loop got stuck on the bolt. Yeah, two threads and I can see one is going to go up to the right, the other one's going to travel down to the left. That's what past me decided to do. Okay. Okay, why didn't I do two more? And then it'll be 160. I like to stop on on even numbers, round numbers. I'm just weird like that. <laughs> from the grid line, not three. There, okay, so 160. I think that's where I will stop for now. So as usual, um, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. Great, thanks everyone. Bye.